Now CNBC releasing our exclusive data on how Americans really feel about the economy. We've got a great new way to do this, and it's called the All-America Economic Survey. And let's show you the cool way, the cool stats. And Steve Leisman, the cool man. Take it away. Aaron, thanks very much. Our CNBC All-America Economic Survey presents some new data on what Americans think about the state of the economy, and we're going to present it in a new way. We call it 4D technology, three dimensions plus the dimension of data. Let's get right to what the data show, which is a really pessimistic attitude among Americans on the state of the economy. Take a look at this first chart right here. We asked Americans, how do you feel about the economy? Poor, fair, good, or excellent? Not very optimistic results right here. Take a look. Poor, 62% right here. Fair, 30%. Put those two together, 92% of the American public views the economy as poor and fair. How about good or excellent? Don't need to really have two hands to count that. Just 8% viewing it that way. Let's get rid of that chart here and take a look more in depth about what people think about the future and the current scenario. Again, not much better here. Optimistic now for the future. It's up just two points. We spent $800 billion on stimulus and only two percentage point increase in those who are optimistic now and for the future. Take a look here. In fact, the level of pessimism, I got to get out of the way of this thing. Let me come around and show you a little bit here. 59% of the public pessimistic now and for the future. That's up from a year ago, which was 52%. Let me get rid of this and go more in depth about perhaps the reasons for the pessimism. We asked Americans in our poll, how do you, you expect your home value to, with more on this issue, how the economic pessimism plays into politics. Aaron? I, it, it, that's really neat technology. I mean, honestly, that, that, was, <laughs> that was fun watching those, those bar charts grow into your hands. Can you just tell us a little bit about it? Well, I can tell you just a little bit about it. It's kind of a lot of wizardry, and, and, and really what it's about, Aaron, as far as I'm concerned, is ability to present the data in a new way. You know, we can bring up these charts here, and we can kind of pull the data out, and then kind of walk around and tell you about it. I can go behind the chart and in front of all kinds of things. I wish it was better data we were showing you here, more optimistic data, so we're having some fun with it, but really, it's, it's not great data, but I think it's a better, clearer way to show the data, and that's really what it's all about, Aaron and Mark. It's pretty, pretty neat looking. Well, we'll, we'll look forward to the second installment coming up next hour. Thanks. It was like magic. I want to see one of those bars stab Steve. Throw out and knock him in the head. <laughs> now our All America survey installment de covering everything from the economy to hiring to taxes in the midterms. And this time we're going to zero in on who America is blaming for the weak economy. Let's go back to Steve Leisman with his bar charts out of thin air. Aaron, thanks very much. In the last hour, we told you about Americans' pessimistic attitudes on the economy. Now we're going to show how that translates into some rather poor attitudes about our American leaders. We asked Americans, this is a survey of 800 Americans throughout the country, all income groups, all regions of the country. We asked them about the approval level of different leaders. Take a look at this chart right here. What do you think about the top leaders when it comes to the economy. How about Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke and Tim Geithner? Very low approval ratings, unchanged when we asked this question about a year ago. The important thing about these guys right here is that they have low recognition factors. Most Americans are really unsure who they are or what kind of jobs they're doing. Not really true about the next group, congressional Republicans and Democrats, 35%, a slight edge probably within the margin of error of the poll for the Democrats there, and 31%, really two to one disapproval to approval. How about President Obama? Well, of the groups we asked, he's got the highest approval rating. However, keep, important to remember, when he came into office, that approval rating was, 50, was, was 55 percent. Now it's fallen by about 10 points. Let's get rid of this chart here and take a look more at that number for Obama and how we get there. We talk about this issue. Here's the approval rating we just showed you, 45 percent right there. We get there because a lot more people have a high approval rating, and other people have a very low approval rating, and it's tied to views on the economy. We think that's really key right here. Take a look here. If you think your home value is going to increase, if you think the economy will improve, you have a 69 percent approval rating of Obama. How about on the other side? Take a look right there. If you think your home value is going down, if you think the economy will get worse, just 16 percent of that last group approves of Obama. Clearly, there's an issue of hope and the economy that's weighing on the approval rating of the president. Let's look a little bit more in depth at this data and take a look at who America public is feeling with our CNBC All America Economic Survey. Steve Lee's been drilling down with a look at just how elusive the American dream is becoming. Steve. Aaron, thanks very much. And we've been bringing you this data, of course, in a very special way using our brand new 4D technology, three dimensions of space, 
1D, that's for the data. Let's talk about what Americans are saying about the state of the economy, then we're going to drill down into some detail. We have some charts here we want to show you here on the state of the economy. Asking Americans, do you think the economy is poor, only fair, good, or excellent? Take a look here. Very little margin of error in this data. An overwhelming majority saying it's poor or only fair. In fact, 92%. How about good or excellent? Look, I can only, I only need uh, not all of my two hands here to come up with the percentage that's good or excellent. Take a look here now. We ask them about the current situation and the future. Take a look at what the change has been from a year ago. 7% saying they're optimistic now for the future, almost within the margin of error of the change from we asked the question a year ago. How about pessimism for now and the future? 59%, up seven points from a year ago. Let's drill into some of the reasons why this is the case. What do the top market experts and economists across America believe the impact of the election will be on your portfolio? Here with the results of an exclusive CNBC poll and showing off some of our new 4D technology is our senior economics reporter, Steve Leisman. Steve. Carl, thanks very much. Two things distinguish our reporting this evening on this election. The first is the concentration on what this election means for your pocketbook and your investments. The second is our 4D technology, 3D plus the data, to really bring this data to you and bring it home. We ask market experts and economists, people who control tens if not hundreds of billions of dollars, what will happen to the stocks in six months and in a year, depending upon who controls the Congress. Take a look at what they said here about who would, what will happen to the Dow in six months if... The Democrats control 10783. Why is that an important number? It's important because it's below the level where we are right now. What if happens as we expect? Republicans take one house. If Congress is split, 11623. Not bad. About 7% right there. And then take a look right here. Big numbers if Republicans go in six months. But hold on, it gets better over the course of a year. What happens to the Dow if Democrats control? Again, below the level where we are right now. And if Congress is split as we expect, 11,995. And actually, you get here to 12,148. Let me come back around this thing here and go over here and show you. We put all of this together in a chart here. You can see those are the two numbers for the Democrats. Here are the two numbers right here if Congress is split. And right here, our market experts really like this idea of Republicans controlling both houses. Thought to be an outlier, but we just thought we'd put the question in right there. What about the other big issue out here tonight, the deficit? What happens? What's the best outcome to cutting the deficits? Take a look at this number right here. Just 1% of our panel believes that a Democrat control is the best thing for cutting the deficit. And if Congress is split 22%, a pretty good majority, 28% say it doesn't really matter. And now look at this thing right here. 49% say if Republicans control both houses, that's the best outcome for tonight for cutting the deficit. Now the question is, are these two charts related? Remember on the one hand, we're telling you over here that if Republicans control, that's the best for the stock market. It's also the best for the deficit. So maybe those two things are related. Maria, we have, we have Kramer, we have Kudlow, we have Santelli, we have Cantania. Now we have 4D to bring you the best of the information on the market. Absolutely, and those numbers basically suggest that if, in fact, we were to see a sweep tonight, the market rallies. So let's head over to Steve Leisman now. He's got some new exit polling data. Steve. Maria, thanks very much. And I think I can set, shed some light on some of the things and the results that John Harwood is talking about when it comes to what are the main issues out there and then why people are voting the way they're voting. This exit poll data does show us here, when we go to the 4D technology here, what are the most important issues? Well, guess what? It's not the Afghan war, and it's not illegal immigration. Healthcare, well, that begins to register, but hold on. Look at what they say about the economy. I got to get out of the way of that one. 62%, you could pretty much add up all the other issues, and it comes up to the economy still pretty much is on par. So what are people saying about the economy? Well, the attitude is not very positive here. Ask them, excellent. Just 1% of those who voted, according to the exit poll, say the condition of the economy is excellent, good. A little bit better here. And this is the biggest number right here. 51% saying the economy, hey, just not so good. And 37% say it's poor. Now, let me walk over to our other uh, 4D technology position here and see what people say the priority should be 
for Congress. Cutting taxes, not as high as you might think there. How about spending to create jobs, 35%, and right here, 40% say reduce the deficit. So that's a bit of a divided economy between these two here because obviously these are opposed to each other. You can't be spending to create jobs and reducing the deficit. Now some astonishing results about the Tea Party getting right at what John Harwood was showing right there. What are the attitudes on the Tea Party here? Check out here. Neutral, one in four Americans are neutral on the Tea Party. Opposed, one in three. Now look at this number right here. It's according to the exit poll. These are voters, 41%. Why is that so critical? Because CNBC did our All America survey just a few weeks ago. We found that support in the broader population is only 31%. Who came out to vote? 41% of those who came out to vote support the Tea Party. So you're seeing the Tea Party come out and voting in greater numbers than they exist in the population. Tea Party here, 41%. Take a look at this other chart over here. What does it show you? The economy is a big deal. So that's going to be what's behind all the numbers and the results that John Hart was going to bring you tonight. Maria? Let me bring in Steve Leishman here. He's got more on the Bush tax cuts and other exit polling results. Steve, what do you know? Yeah, Maria, let me give you some data on, on where Americans really stand. As we take a break, a look at Linda McMahon's conceded.